No One Will Save You stars Caitlin Deaver as a woman who must fight for survival when an alien invades her home. The film basically features no dialogue in the hopes of creating an intense and personal gauntlet for the main character. Let's see if it succeeds. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight, I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Great for the audio listeners, Tim. <laughs> as much as I appreciate the joke. Uh, <laughs> yes, T Tim is here. He's been quiet, but he's here. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome everyone. This is a horror movie podcast. We get together and we talk about horror film. This is actually our, our vote winner episode for the month. <gasps> Uh, our patrons. So you can't complain because you picked it. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Uh, I don't want to hear any sour pusses in the comments being like, oh, I wanted a leprechaun movie, but like, mm, sorry, you picked this one. We did all the leprechaun movies. There's no more leprechaun that's movies. What, I know, that's what I'm saying. That's why That's why I don't want any sour pusses in the comments. Oh, bloody hell. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, better than bloody nips, am I right? <laughs> uh, this is... <laughs> uh, so every month at patreon.com slash TV, uh, our patrons uh, at the voting tier and up get to vote on uh, a movie between three. Uh, we had three 2023 movies to pick from and they voted for No One Will Save You, which is a Hulu movie that came out in like October-ish, maybe September, something around there. I think October, yeah. Yeah. So this is actually, this is one that could have been on the ace. This is a, this is a sci-fi horror movie because there's aliens involved, but... Um, I knew very little about this going in, so I, I actually didn't realise until like 20 minutes in that I'm like, wait a minute, no one said anything yet. And then realised <laughs> that the gimmick of the movie is that there's no dialogue. There's like almost dialogue, and then like someone will interrupt, or there'll be something that stops someone from speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, most of the time it's because there's one character on their own, it's not because there's, it's always that. But the few times that right. there are almost lines of dialogue, there's some there's something that interferes. So... Uh, it's one character, played by Caitlin Deaver, try to survive uh, as an alien event <laughs> is happening, <laughs> and I'll I'll leave it at that. We'll start spoiler free, of course, as we as we always do, and we'll warn you before we go into the spoilers. Just before we do get started, talk about the movie. I'll just remind you all if you are enjoying the show to hit the like button on YouTube. It helps out a bunch if you do, and of course you can get a bonus episode and other little special bonus goodies over at patreoncom slash TV. We'll tell you more about those at the end. But, alien movie, Caitlin Deaver, and when I told Tim, <laughs> when I told Tim this won the vote, his reaction was, <laughs> So Tim, what did you think of No One Will Save You? Um, yeah, so it, when it was coming out, uh, it you know was starting to get a little buzz. I'd heard people talking about it, because uh, it did come out of nowhere, uh, or at least I felt like it. Like, I didn't know, you know much about going in, and then I think it kind of just dropped on hulu and you know how streamers are uh, you're lucky if you get like a day of promotion <laughs> uh but yeah it, it kind of just uh, appears but uh you know I, I saw people online I was kinda like oh like you know it's pretty cool uh you know this movie or whatever she doesn't talk uh <laughs> you, know, be... <laughs> Hold on, you sound uh, like a incel who's just excited that the woman doesn't talk <laughs> when you say it that way <laughs> oh man there's this movie with a chick in it and she doesn't talk must see <laughs> Um, so I, 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 so I watched it, so I, I'd seen it before and then, uh, I mean, not to give my hand away too much, but, um, I, I would say I wasn't super pumped to have to watch it again. Um, you but give I'll, your hand I'll, away. I asked you what you thought of it. This is, you're meant to be giving your hand away in this, this response. Pete, you know, nothing about a podcast structure. You gotta <laughs> leave them wanting more. <laughs> um, well, I'll, 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 I'll see, I'll see what you, you want. Do you want me to start with the positive or the negative first? <laughs> you've never given me this choice before. We've done 560 something episodes and you've never <laughs> once given me this choice. So I'm not really sure well, what I love to say. Democracy. I love democracy, you know, and seeing people vote makes me really want, you know, <laughs> to see people's opinions voiced. <laughs> but this is about your opinion you're asking me to pick what are your opinions i want first what aspect of my opinion do you want to hear first i mean you're gonna get them both it's not like it's one or the other 
Well, you put the ass in aspect, so let's see. <laughs> okay, give, give, give me the negative first. Let's just rip off the, the plaster, as it were. Okay. Um, yeah, so I wasn't super into most of the movie. Uh, it's, uh, like you said, there's the, the big aspect to it is the, the whole gimmick thing, which I thought was pretty dumb and unnecessary and i mean we've seen stuff like this before where you know uh stuff like a, a quiet place or something like hush like there are movies you know where you don't hear a lot or whatever but it's usually a reason for it it's baked into the story or the plot somehow um this it felt um very unrealistic to me that we would never you know like hear a, a character talk like yeah, and like you said, I mean, there's grunts and like screams and, and stuff here and there, but I don't know. It just really takes me out of the movie because it's just like it, it doesn't feel like natural. It, it like mm. it, it feels like it's trying to be too precious. And uh, I I do like this actress. I you know I, I think she does a good job. But I really didn't like this character. Um, I kind of found it annoying. And uh, there's like a lot of stuff that you know ends up uh relating to this kind of mysterious past uh and you know characters that are upset with her and it's all just a lot of grief and trauma bullshit that <laughs> i i felt got into the way of uh the movie for me and yeah i don't know it just felt like a little like i don't know, kind of up its own ass <laughs> at, at times uh so that aspect really annoyed me but uh, on to the positive bits i will say that you know in terms of the actual monster alien side of the coin uh you know i i enjoyed that for the most part i thought you know there were some pretty cool scenes some creepy stuff uh i might have talked about this before but i'm actually a big you know proponent of uh alien horror like especially as someone who grew up in the 90s which i don't know if you remember but just like <laughs> aliens were a lot more prominent in the 90s and i'm not like you know not specifically like fake movie aliens but just like in real life like you know, there ah, are, yes, uh, the real life aliens that we're all, we're all aware like, of, yes. <laughs> well, like, you don't care about aliens visiting people as much anymore, and I feel like, you know, in the 90s, there's always a, you know, special, usually on Fox, <laughs> like, where you either would see an alien getting autopsied or some special about like, UFOs or, or you know, just lots of stories about people getting abducted and stuff, and uh, I always thought that stuff was so creepy. Like, to me, I thought legit one of the scariest things, like, when I was a kid was, you know, getting abducted by aliens, so I, I do like that aspect of alien horror and um for the most part i, I thought this did you know a, a pretty good job with those scenes uh if you kind of i don't know, <laughs> break it down and think about the story for a little bit uh i think there's some dumb <laughs> stuff to it but i mean overall like usually I, I felt there was like a level of excitement when you know the aliens were on screen and you know chasing the the character around and stuff so so that stuff worked for me and then you know, I, I wish that maybe the movie just kind of stuck with that and was just interested in making more of a interesting, uh, you know, alien horror movie instead of, you know, having an alien segment that then just gets interrupted by more having to deal with the character and the dumb <laughs> grief and stuff that she's going through. So, um, it's, a, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm being like a little too harsh, uh, with my negative aspects. Cause I don't think it's like a terrible movie by any means. Like, uh, again, I, I think it's more like kind of just okay or fine, but, uh, m maybe it seems a bit harsher because I do feel like this was one that, uh, a lot of people were hyping up when it came out and it was getting like some buzz and seemed to be getting good reviews and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, uh, where do I start? I have many thoughts. Um, <laughs> but actually, first off, I want to set the scene for just my frame of mind at this particular moment. Is okay. I'm seeing on my screen one of your cats moving around. On my periphery, <laughs> I'm seeing two of my cats chase each other and move around. I hear a third one in the distance meowing, mm -hmm. but tough, I'm not getting up. I've already let cats in and out for the last, like, 10 minutes before we started recording. I'm just very mm. annoyed right now by cats, okay? I just, like, it's time to go to sleep. That's all I'm saying. Let's go to sleep. All right. Yeah. Mm. So, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, I love the idea of this movie. 
I mm. love the idea of doing not. It's not really a silent movie because there's still sound effects. There's still you know breathing. There's still everything else, right? Yeah. Right. And in fact, there's an old Twilight Zone episode that's kind of this idea that I feel probably heavily inspired Ooh. this this episode. Okay. Uh, that that episode had a bit of a a wild twist, of course. But other than that, the, the basic idea in the of someone and the yes and the Twilight Zone. So. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch okay so, <laughs> so conceptually i love this right mm -hmm. it's just not good enough <laughs> to actually work preach, and that re preach. Uh, it really upsets me because i yes, love the queen <laughs> i love the concept of one person on their own and slowly sure. building the dread of an alien coming after them but mm -hmm. there's just several problems with with the movie one mm -hmm. is that they show the alien and get to that far too quickly, like mm -hmm. slowly build to it, you idiots. Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you show me the alien far too quick. It's in the first 20 minutes, if maybe even less than that. Secondly, I, I was like rewatching, I was pretty surprised at how quickly they got to it. Yeah. Secondly, every time the aliens on the screen, they look like shit because they're CG <laughs> and it like I couldn't enjoy it. I, I like there's like a couple of small fragments of t moments that I enjoyed, but most of the time, all I could think was how crap they looked. Uh, That's very fair. Yeah. Not so much in design wise. Design wise, are kind of just classic right, aliens, right. but mm -hmm. in terms of just the visual quality of how they looked on the screen, they look like shit. So mm -hmm. I, I give no points for that. Um, <laughs> And I think they just overcomplicated things by having too many like, interactions where she was in town with other characters, so the whole gimmick of not talking kind of started to feel really in your face in a way that right. it would have felt a bit more natural if it was just her on her own. I maybe just had one or two interactions that felt like a big deal, but mm -hmm. I think there were it felt a bit too gimmicky at points because of that. And I think... I could yeah. actually be okay with that if I thought the direction was nailing the vibe, but mm -hmm. honestly, I, I felt kind of a disconnect from the movie for the majority of the runtime, and we won't say what it is, of course, until we get to spoilers, but I really kind of hated the last like two or three minutes. I thought the, yes, the yes. tone of the ending just completely killed it for me. And I agree a thousand percent. <laughs> it, it, I, uh, like, There's a lot of stuff in this movie that I feel like I don't know, it, like the filmmakers, like it just feels like they're just trying to be like too cutesy or something with it, which uh. feels at odds. Like when it's like, you know, this like horrific, like alien invasion abduction kind of story. Like I, I, I love I love a movie with a gimmick, right? A simple gimmick mm -hmm. movie, I think can be really good. And I think there is a much better version of this movie that can exist and arguably Absolutely. already does yeah. with an episode of The Twilight Zone. But <laughs> And it maybe helps that that was only 25 minutes versus an 80-minute runtime. But I, th I think you could do an 80-minute version of that. I think it could be a good time. But I don't mind even there being like a sort of backstory that it kind of slowly reveals. I'm okay with that. Sure. I'm, I'm okay with the concept of that. I think the problem is, though, is that by the time you get to the back half of the movie, it becomes so focused on that. And so much of it is like in dream sequences and in characters' heads and far too kind of artsy stuff for its own good that it just kind of like no i was here for suspense and i feel no suspense i feel no tension i feel no nothing yeah. um and at times it feels like you're doing a really really like i want to take you back to a movie that we didn't do on this show we did it on the atomic cinema experiment the sci-fi movie podcast that you can go check out with myself mm -hmm. and david although it used to be tara and we did fire in the sky on that show oh sure yeah and i feel it was a, a segment of this movie where it's mm -hmm. kind of doing kind of broad, similar ideas as Fire in the Sky. And mm -hmm. all I could think about, well, that movie's not perfect and has some pacing issues. All I could think about was how this movie is doing too much stuff, it's too over the top, there's too mm -hmm. much CG, that I, I just, all the atmosphere that Fire in the Sky was able to accomplish with the idea of the unknown and these beings that are here, here mm -hmm. they're just CG things that are, you know, and not only that, like, mildest of mildest early spoilers here mm -hmm. it's not just one alien right in mm -hmm. fact the main character kind of deals with an alien quite early on in this movie which honestly makes them a bit toothless for the rest of it i just i felt sure. nothing from them as, as the movie went on so uh honestly i don't think you're being too harsh i outright think this is not good i think it wants to be something that i think appeals to me mm -hmm. 
I don't think it achieves it. And frankly, by the time I got to the end, I was just waiting for it to end. I could not wait for this to be <laughs> over for the last half hour. So, uh, you know, like sometimes, you know, you've been with someone for a while that you kind of, you, you get to know them pretty well. And then, you know, that, that kind of, that, that spark that you had when you, you know, first met them, like it kind of starts to wither and fade, but then sometimes they say something that just wins you back and, and reignites that spark. I'm just, uh, I'm, you know, I'm loving the hate right now just because like I, everything I've heard from people is a, a lot of just like really gushing and, and being very favorable to this movie. So I'm glad that I'm not the only one that, <laughs> you know, it, that, you know, didn't, uh, isn't singing its praises. Joe, Joe is so weird about you say, I've not heard any of this to be honest, but you mm. saying that to me makes me, and this is going to sound really, it's going to sound. <laughs> Let's get mean. Why not? It's a new year. People, people always want to be like, I'm going to be nicer in the new year. But like, oh, maybe we should be meaner. <laughs> No, I don't want to be mean, but this is going to maybe come off a little bit mean or a little bit um, like I'm talking down to people, right? Mm -hmm. If you like this movie, that's great. I'm happy you like it. I really am. But <laughs> you saying, the way you phrased it just there, where you said people are really into it and they love this cool idea and the gimmick, to me it feels like, oh, are you 12 and I've never seen a gimmick in a movie before? Because <laughs> this isn't that well done. Like I like the gimmick too. I think the gimmick on paper is my kind of movie, but I just don't think the movie does a good job of making it compelling. It's very easy to have a gimmick. Uh, what's a little more difficult is making it actually work in the narrative of the film. And it's kind of like you were saying before, like, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't mind that gimmick, but it just feels like it's really brought to a screeching halt. Like, it, it's not that bad, you know, in the early in the beginning of the movie when she's by herself. Like, it makes sense. Like, you know, she's, you know. I feel like, you know, people might say little things here and there by themselves or whatever, but, you know, people aren't going to be having, like, full-on conversations, so when she's at home, that's fine. But then, yeah, like, you know, whatever, a third or something into the movie, like, you know, she starts actually going into town and interacting with people, and at that point, then it get, it really takes you out of the movie because it's, like, very obvious, like, that she's not <laughs> interacting with people, and it feels weird. And again, it's not, like, other things where there's you know, an easy narrative reason or something where you're like, oh, well, she's not speaking because of this or whatever. And said it here, it's like, okay, like, it's weird now <laughs> that you're not just, like, jumping up and down and screaming about aliens <laughs> to the people that are walking by. Uh, and, you know, you're letting your, like, you know, haunted past, like, stop you uh, when you should be, like, freaking the hell out <laughs> because of, like, the things that have been happening uh, since the start of this movie. So it's... Yeah, it's very, very glaring, and it's it just like it, it's just in your face too much. It, it just doesn't feel natural. Yeah, it's like I say, I I am okay with the gimmick, and I'm okay with religiously sticking to it. I really am. I just don't think that this movie builds its story around the gimmick well enough, where it feels like that's what the movie is. Like I I think. You know, there's an episode of Mr. Robot actually that does this, where it's like there's a, there's a mm. silent episode where there's no dialogue, right? Barring like one line at the start and one line at the end. Because the, the first, the, the line of dialogue at the start is we don't need to talk. And then the rest of the episode, mm. the characters don't talk, right? And then okay. They're carrying out this plan and they've got a thing they're doing and there's no talking. And it works so well because it's sort of set up as, okay, that's what this episode is and this is what it's going to be. And it totally fits into the narrative of where it is. And I think you can do that with a, a movie. You, you can set up that the, the narrative kind of dictates thematically that there shouldn't be any talking and that you're saying something about the fact that there's no talking. And in this movie, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I, they kind of are. Like, I get what they're going for with her trauma and that right, she's right. alienated from society and she has to forgive herself. <laughs> blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it's... It feels like someone read a script writing 101 book and <laughs> threw, threw the ideas into into the movie. And yeah. I just I wasn't very impressed. I'll just say that. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. I thought the movie was kind of shit, Tim. I thought it was shit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Me too. I, 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 sometimes I get happy because uh, you, you're not really sure <laughs> if we're going to be at odds. But sometimes it, it, it's nice when we're on the same page. <laughs> 
I wanted to. I want because I knew you weren't feeling that positive on it before I watched it. Because mm-hmm. you'd kind of you, you'd, you'd let it slip a little bit how you felt. <laughs> okay, I, I knew going in you didn't like it very much, and I wanted to fight you. I wanted to come in here saying no. This is a, a an artful masterwork. You are a full Tim, and I think I ended up liking it even less than you did. <laughs> so, so. so yeah, admit that I'm smart. Mm, I'm not sure where you're getting that from what I said. It was like a bit of a leap. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah. And there's, there's, a, there's a specific moment, actually, because like, I wasn't in love with the first like half hour or so, mm-hmm. but I thought it was serviceable enough at what it was doing. I thought maybe it'll keep getting better and it'll, it'll go places. But there's actually something that starts happening about half an hour in that the movie completely lost me. And I'm like, okay, I don't like what you're doing now. I just don't like how much bigger this is i thought this was going to be an intimate like one villain one protagonist oh sure, sure, you know, sure. stalker yeah, yeah. type movie and it ended up pulling in lots of other like plot ideas into it mm-hmm. and i thought it just muddied everything down and just kind of felt like uh, now, now you're you're reaching too far i guess it, it kind of felt like they're trying to do instead of like one very simple type of alien movie it feels like they're trying to do like 10 different type of alien movies mm. you know like oh yeah like this aspect of aliens is scary and this one too and they're like oh yeah like we'll we'll get the like i can't really go into you know much without spoilers but um yeah like kind of like you know you're like you're alluding to like yeah if it was just one person trying to survive against one monster i think that'd be a lot more interesting and compelling versus yeah the kind of i guess like the bigger world they're trying to break open or whatever yeah yeah so i guess we'll just say spoilers because uh like mm-hmm. at this point i don't even know what to dance around anymore i just want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want to get it's to funny the... you bring up dancing <laughs> oh god <don't> even... <laughs> it's funny but it t- okay i can't say spoilers everyone right spoilers <laughs> from this point forth for for no one will save you you've been warned so at the end when the dancing thing started, I'd actually <laughs> forgotten that they set up that she wanted to dance because it was like mm. one scene of her like practicing dance moves. Right. I mean, and I think for, if you don't watch this movie and I say she's practicing dance moves, you probably imagine like a routine, like a cheerleader or maybe like some, maybe mm-hmm. not break dancing, but something that you'd imagine someone doing on their own. This is not what she's, she's doing. doing. like the Fortnite dance. <laughs> no, she's practicing like ballroom <laughs> dancing. Is like, she's pretending to have a partner and sort of swinging around, and she's got like foot marks on the floor, and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? what? I, I'd completely forgotten about it. So at the end, when the 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 ends in this almost dreamlike state of her dancing at like a party and just mm-hmm. being happy and it's delirious, I was like, oh yeah, the setup, the, the fact that she wanted to dance. Mm-hmm. Ah, I still hate this, but oh, fair enough. And, everything about it is very like grading like the music it was like this you know it, it felt like they're going out of the way to be like well we're not going to choose like a, a you know a popular new song like we're going to use this kind of like old-timey song and it all felt like very like you know twee or, or something like like again they're just being very precious and there's a moment where yeah she's like in the midst of her dancing she kind of like stops and like looks at the camera which feels like forever and it's just like i hate this i hate, <laughs> I hate this so the, much <laughs> i hate yeah, this so much but we have to explain how we got there right so right, right, right. the yeah the movie opens with just her going about her day she builds mm-hmm. models of, of the town and she she got a little and it's not, i think it's actually representing the town she lives in it's just like a, a, mm-hmm. a generic kind of town of models she's built uh mm-hmm. or orders on ebay and just sort of puts them together um mm-hmm. We see that people don't like her very much. She tries to wave at someone, and the guy just kind of like turns his nose up at her. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. She goes into town. She she goes to visit a gravestone. We find out later on that's her best friend, and everyone blames her for what happened to the best friend. We find out eventually what the incident was, why they all blame her later on. But that's just some broad stuff to kick things off mm. but it's that night when she's in bed right i'm, I'm sort of speeding through that opening bit because it's that night yeah, she's right. in bed where the alien you know she hears some noises uh, everything lights up for a second and she comes downstairs and she sort of, you know and at first i thought okay they're doing the smart thing and they're not showing it right away we're just sort of seeing a vague shape behind some pillars or behind some glass or whatever it is but you see this alien very quickly, right? As soon as she oh, runs yeah. up to the bedroom and she like hides behind the bed and then under the bed, 
Like you see this alien in all of its shitty CG glory, <laughs> and it's moving around. It just it never looks like it blends into the environment. It always just feels mm. off and goofy, and it really took me out of 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 enjoying it. Uh, and I was very surprised that after a bit of a chase, uh, she ends up killing it almost by accident, where she just happens to be holding something that's that can stab him uh, when he sort of like picks her up. Which, by the way, something that establishes in this scene is that the aliens have telekinesis. They can move things right. around by just waving their hand and then something will move. We see them do it to couches. We see them do it to her at some points. But one of my complaints is how inconsistent they seem to use this ability. There are several points in this right. movie where I'm like, why don't they just grab her with a telekinesis? Because it feels like they could just do that now. But there's a chase happening, so we're not doing that. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I thought the death was kind of confusing because it's like, all right, you're powerful enough where you can like you know drag her you know towards you with her mind but then like you know well, just one swipe of her hand with its mind not her mind oh with its mind yeah that's right. <laughs> uh <laughs> but then like you know one swipe of her hand and it's like you can't avoid that like you, you can use your telekinesis to block that or whatever like i don't know, it seemed just a little strange to me i mean i'm fine with it being taken by surprise but that's something mm-hmm. i feel like you should be doing in the third act not <laughs> Not, not, right, yeah. not in the first night she sees the alien, or like, mm-hmm. and maybe part of this. I feel like one of the critiques I might see in response to what I'm saying is that people say, "Oh, you were expecting a different type of movie," and okay, mm-hmm. like I see why you're saying that, but like, I'm not saying I expected things because I I thought there's only one way to do this. I'm saying you should build to the first encounter mm-hmm. you should build and i felt like it was happening so quickly that there was no weight to any of it there was no time to build mm-hmm. suspense or tension all of a sudden she hides a little bit but very quickly we get to this point where she's she's killed this alien and mm-hmm. i was shocked that she gets up the next day and like goes into town and we get her interacting <laughs> with people uh yeah. and you know she, she the car's not working anymore because the aliens like knock out everything with power so it's like okay so that's not happening mm-hmm. but I was shocked that she went into town and when she almost speaks to someone, it's because she runs into, she goes to the police station, obviously, right? To try and report mm-hmm. what she's, what's happened to her. And the chief of police is the father of her best friend who is dead. And mm-hmm. him and his wife are there and she's about to say something like she hear the breath, she's about to speak. And then the mum of the, of the dead girl spits in her face. Mm-hmm. And that makes her just turn around and not, report anything she saw <laughs> it still feels about yeah it's, it's hard to justify that like like i i know that's like a very hard thing to like yeah emotionally how do you unpack that and how do you approach these people but i mean obviously she i'm sure she knew that you know the chief of police or, or whatever was you know that girl's father so she probably had to you know expect that that might happen if she's walking into the small town sheriff's office but yeah, I think under these circumstances, like alien invasion, like kind of trumps, you know, uh, whatever, like, you know, past you have. And and it's not like she just saw something in the sky and she's, you know, like, oh, will they believe me? It's like she can literally be like, I know this sounds crazy, but I have a dead alien body at my house. <laughs> you know, like it like it's not like she doesn't have proof or, or something. Yeah, it's sitting right there. Uh, honestly, the only standout moment of this whole first alien sequence, I guess, is when she's hiding next to the fridge and the alien opens the fridge door and That's then cool, yeah. kind of looks over. So the hand comes over the top of the fridge door mm-hmm. and then the head comes over and looks at her. And I'm like, okay, that was an okay little moment. Mm-hmm. Um, because sadly, sadly I, I do think the direction is maybe what hurts the movie more than anything yeah. at times. Yeah, I mean. I, I guess on paper, like, I do like the idea of, like, oh, yeah, like, a, you know, something that's more bombastic and, and these fights with the aliens and they're, like, screaming in your face and doing something creepy. But yeah, that stuff, honestly, ends up not working as well as, like, you know, some of the more quieter moments. Like, there are parts where it felt like a stealth video game or something where she's hiding behind, you know, like, a, a counter or something or, like, peeking around the corner. You just kind of see it in the background and it seems a bit more menacing. That stuff you know, like, worked a little better than when it's actually, like, yeah, jumping around and getting right in your face. Yeah, it just, you become numb to it. Like, I, I got so bored with <laughs> the actual chasing. Uh, but, but, yeah. the, but the second time it was happening later in the movie, I was like, oh, I'm just done with this now. Um, yeah, the, there were some times where I kind of liked 
like they were trying to do stuff that was like a little different that I hadn't seen before. Like there's, you see a scene where I, you know, early on, I, I think she's hiding under her bed and you see like the alien's feet on the ground and then it kind of like the toes curl up and it kind of walks in this like, it's like weird it's way. Like, it's like fingers. Like the toes are almost like fingers. Yeah. The way it walks. I was like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. Like that's something I hadn't seen before. And then there's, you know, some parts like later on where you have these, they almost look like maybe a little more like spider like or something versions of the aliens with these really long limbs that are kind of doing weird stuff. And so I, I like every now and again when they'd be like, oh, OK, you're doing something that's maybe a little more original or, or weird. But yeah, a lot of that stuff then is kind of brushed away for just like, yeah, kind of generic, like CGI screaming in your face. Well, stuff. I think the problem as well is that like there's like three different sizes of alien, but there's never any reasons mm -hmm. why there's different sizes. There's never any. Mm -hmm. you know, like you know when you're watching aliens and you get to the alien queen there's, there's some context of this is the mother this is the one that births the others mm -hmm. and stuff or births the, the face huggers at least uh, yeah. and this like there's just random different sizes and there's never really any sense and it would be interesting i guess if mm -hmm. they had more different designs but they're, they're, they're not they all look the same they're, they're just different sizes well i mean I, again like as someone who grew up in you know the 90s at the, the height of the alien boom like I do like that kind of classical gray alien where, you know, it's just like the big oval, uh, you know, face and, uh, you know, the large black eyes and like, you know, small little like mouth and stuff. Like, I do like that classic alien design as a concept, I, I suppose, but it usually just tends not to be that interesting in movies, especially a movie like this where like it might be a little more interesting if it was if those were just like the aliens on the ship or whatever that are like very cold scientific like doing autopsies on you or something but it's not like an interesting design when it's like you know just um these kind of like you know like a an army of you know just alien bodies that are like coming at you especially if you compare it to something like you know like <laughs> pretty obviously the greatest alien movie and design of all time like the xenomorph like that's so much more interesting and cool to look at like yeah, you can just you know sustain a movie with that. Like you know, this is just kind of, you know, <laughs> it's not that interesting for very long. I, I just I think they had to not show it for a much longer time. They they had mm -hmm. to hold back and they didn't. They, they, you see mm -hmm. it within minutes of the first tease that there's an alien. You see the full thing, and then you know from there it's mm -hmm. like okay, we've just seen it already. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, the part of the movie though that made me go, oh, I'm kind of done with this now is mm -hmm. she decides after this incident at the police station that she's just going to leave town. She gets, she sees a bus and she's like, I'm just going to get a bus mm -hmm. out of town. And she goes on the bus and she sits down and then in this scene, a stranger comes up from the back of the bus, sits behind her, mm -hmm. she gets intimidated and the stranger attacks her. And then we quickly learn that some of the humans in the town have been replaced or body snatched or, or taken over. Mm -hmm. We see they've got like something in there. You can see like it moving in their neck. It's like a... Mm -hmm like a neck hugger but inside their throat if that <laughs> makes sense yeah um and this was the moment where there's like two people on the bus like jumping around on the seats like try to get to her i'm like okay you've lost me this is just stupid <laughs> this is just nonsense people jumping at her like they're animals mm -hmm. sh silly shit and this was the moment where i'm like okay i'm just out of this now like i, I don't know if you can bring it back for, for me like like the only appealing thing to me about this movie was the idea of this one person trying to like you know sneak around from a scary monster that's mm -hmm. that's what the, the the few things i saw from a trailer gave me that impression and then this was just like no no we're doing these huge big ideas like the hand town's been taken over by alien mm -hmm. parasites or whatever and when she gets off the bus and runs away she sees like groups of people all like pointing up to the, the sky and like there's ufos in the clouds and it's just all these big mm -hmm. cg shots of all this shit happening i'm like no like the unknown mm. like have it be creepy <laughs> and all you're doing is just showing no. me everything it, it i don't know it's just <sighs> it, it's weird again like they're trying like too many different things like yeah at, at first you think it is something like fire in the sky or communion or something like typical alien abduction story and all of a sudden it's turned into like you know body snatchers or or something like that yeah, it's, started, it's like it's turned out body snatchers but then the shots of the ships in the sky coming through the clouds was like independence day right <laughs> yeah it's like all right you can't do everything like this can't just be like the ultimate alien movie um and yeah and it raised like a lot of questions because it it wasn't like everyone on the bus was attacking her it was just like a few people so it's like 
Yeah. Okay, so some people are, are not affected, but also they don't seem to be pursuing everyone else. And why are they specifically going after her? Because and then, well, I, I assume it's because she killed one of theirs. Like they know that they can alien... sense it or know it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, they they sent an alien after it. It didn't come back. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're like, wait a minute, why is she still walking around all normal? Like, yeah. uh, I imagine that's why. But maybe I'm being generous there. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. But then and it also kind of like bugged me because it was like they they seem so intense but they also seem to give up super easy like with you know they're crawling through the bus and it's all crazy but then it's literally like as soon as she gets off the bus the other person gets off and kind of like just stops i was like mm, okay it's like you can't run <laughs> can't run after her. all right <laughs> yeah and she ends up going back to the house mm -hmm. uh and so I is this like what part when she like runs by like the gravestone or whatever and she has to stop and be like oh yeah that's that's on this this part yeah this is in the way back to the house <sighs> again i know very traumatic experience but there's a lot of other stuff that's going on right now you, you don't have time to stop and be wistful you know yeah like i think you can have her getting over a traumatic past be a great subtext but this right, movie's yeah. not interested in it being subtext this movie wants to shove it down your throat <laughs> at every chance it can by saying hey there's this traumatic thing um so she goes i back. mean it literally tries to shove something down her throat it does actually yeah it does <laughs> she goes back to the house she tries to fortify it a little bit by mm -hmm. basically set put get a bunch of candles ready um she's all right so now we're doing home alone like this movie just won't stop you know <laughs> taking from other movies she starts boiling a bunch of water i guess so she has like mm -hmm. boiling water as a weapon if the if the occasion calls mm -hmm. for it um like I, I'm, not a lot of people know this but that only works if it's holy water i'm <laughs> shoved <laughs> i'm fine with with her being proactive so i, I appreciate mm -hmm. the home alone joke but to be honest like it, this is one of the few right. things in the yeah, movie right, that right, made right. sense yeah. to me it was like okay okay she knows that there's more of a threat coming i don't like that now mm -hmm. it's like an entire town of threats because i didn't feel like that's what the movie was until it suddenly mm -hmm. became that but okay she's expecting more aliens to show up so she's going to get ready that's all fine and honestly, my favorite scene in the movie is probably just after this bit. It's when she's hiding in the basement from the smaller alien. And there's a mm -hmm. great moment where she's hiding under this table and the alien's been walking around the basement and she's looking one way and the camera cuts to the reverse and you can just see the alien just sitting behind her. And there's not mm -hmm. a music sting. And that's what makes it good. There's, not, there's mm -hmm. a music sting when she turns and sees it and that's fine. But there's a couple of seconds where you're just watching silently this alien sitting behind her. And honestly, as far as the alien stuff goes, this was easily the best and arguably only really good moment with the aliens in the mm -hmm. entire movie because it yeah. actually felt like a good bit of direction and editing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. go with that. Yeah, it's it, it's weird that you know they they didn't do more stuff like that. Yeah, it's well because because then it's just this alien chases her around the house. She throws some boiling water over it and then kills it. So she's now taken out two aliens. So. Like, mm -hmm. I get that she's supposed to be just scraping by and getting lucky and whatever, but mm -hmm. at this point, you've really defanged them. Like, now I just feel mm -hmm. like... like what, what, and she kills a third alien in a minute. This bigger alien that has big spider legs mm -hmm. starts crawling towards her, and she basically traps it in the car, because she's in the car and she jumps out the other mm -hmm. side. It gets stuck in the car, and she sets the car on fire and it explodes. And we get this horrible CG shot of the alien burning. <laughs> and I want to make it clear that like the CG in this is pretty damn bad, Obviously, I've seen worse, but the problem is, sure, is sure. that it's so frequent, and it's like they're they're relying mm -hmm. on it so much because every time there's an alien, there's not a, I I don't think I spot I spotted a single practical alien effect. It's like was Doug Jones busy? Like, could you not just put him in a, a skin suit and have him do some weird stuff? It, it just it, it relies on it so much that it becomes a bigger problem than a movie where, oh, there's one quick bit of CG that's not that great, but at least it's just right. one moment and you knew that they could only do it that way. Here it feels mm -hmm. like, okay, you want to have the cool thing with the legs, do this weird stuff, but the rest of the time, it feels like you could have just had a skinny guy with some makeup and a mask on. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe augment them with CG, but there could have been some sure. practical centre of it that, that was helping it look good and... Sadly, it just isn't. So, I, I really I'm sure they have the budget. They probably saved a ton of money with, uh, you know, by cutting out all the dialogue. 
<laughs> Sadly, Tim hasn't really saved any money. <laughs> <laughs> they still have to record sound for the for the random things they'll have to replace later with the sound effects, and okay. so so they're That's still. That's why they screw you. Yeah. Besides, I don't think not having the boom guy there would have been that much of a money saver <laughs> in the grand scheme of things in a movie. <laughs> as funny as it is to think, oh, we saved a lot of money because we didn't have to record any dialogue. Barring one line, of course. There's one line of dialogue in a dream sequence later. Of course. We'll get, we'll get to that. So... But this this whole thing like it's it's this is this 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 is this has been it. I don't uh, actually, honey. I, I may be mixing things. This is the other problem with the movies. A lot of it because it is just a lot of the same stuff with her running from an alien. Uh, some of it blurs together. Right, right. It's after the car bit, right, where the alien like traps her in a beam in the house, mm-hmm. right. And she gets like you know it does that thing where it kind of drops her and it catches her again. And then yeah. this is where she gets the thing tried to sh- shoved in her throat, like the parasite thing. That's right, after this, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The I, I feel like the parasite thing was pretty close towards the end. Yeah. Uh, it's like the final bit. Yeah, because uh, um, another alien shows up, I guess. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the only explanation I have for why it's not... I, I, okay, whatever. She ends well, up running again from an alien. She, she gets caught in like a, a thing. Oh, yeah, because it's the alien that's got its back to her and she tries to sneak mm-hmm. up behind it because she goes back in the house and there's an alien standing in like one of the rooms uh, looking mm-hmm. at all of her photos and she goes up she's sneaking up behind it and it clearly knows she's there it just waves his, waves its hand like that and it sends her flying mm-hmm. through the wall and I'm like yeah why, why wasn't any of the previous aliens she was killing easily like using their telekinesis because right. it I mean maybe the, maybe the small one's like a kid and it doesn't have that power yet <laughs> but Weird. Well, it makes sense. She is good at killing kids. So <laughs> that was a kind of a burn, Tim. <laughs> well, I'm uh, take that fictional character. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't recovering uh, from that. <laughs> uh, that does remind me of I, I forget exactly which alien encounter it is because, uh, like you said, they all kind of blend together. But there was one scene that like made me roll up my eyes because I, I thought it was so cheesy and i'm sure when they wrote they probably thought like oh this is gonna be such a, an important gripping <laughs> scene but yeah there was like one part with um yeah i think the telekinesis where i she i forget exactly how it's staged but essentially it ends up being like she's holding a picture of her and her friend when they were kids and like the mm. alien like is trying to rip it from her you know hands with its mind or whatever and it's just like so it, 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 I like what you were saying earlier. Like, there's no subtext in the movie. It's just like, you know, like just shoving it in your face. Like, see, she's trying to hold on to the memory of her friend, and they're it's, they're taking it away. <laughs> like, it's beating you over the head with it with a rock. Mm-hmm. That's what it's doing. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. That's foreshadowing for later, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so that's alien puts her through the wall, and then. I did. I, there was a, a little choice here that I did quite like. Is mm. that there's this sort of like red beam of light comes through the window, mm. and it kind of holds her up in the, the ceiling, and it, then it it turns off and it drops her, but then it catches her in the the mid air. Mm-hmm. And I thought every time the red beam of light was on, there was this kind of sound effect. It was like a siren in the distance. I thought that was kind of a cool sound effect. Mm-hmm. Look, it's not a big positive, but it's it's, it's a little detail I liked, right? You know, I'd go even a little further. I think in general, I I kind of liked uh, whenever the beam of light showed showed up. Um, yeah, there was the other th- scene I, again. I forget kind of yeah you know, where it ends up in the movie, but she's once again fighting that like delivery guy or whatever who's who's infected, and like she shoves him in the beam of light and um stuff that like I don't know. Uh, I I thought usually when the light showed up, it was kind of cool. Uh, yes and no. Like I appreciate they kind of set up that this is something they've been doing to everyone because there's all these mm-hmm. rings on the ground of where these beams of lights have been. Oh, right, right. But at the same time, I, I do feel like they were kind of like doing these big flashy moments too often. Uh, I think less is That's more with, with that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sure. th- this movie didn't understand the phrase less is more. Everything was more is more is more is more. <laughs> uh, so... It's when she's caught in this red beam, they shove the parasite down her throat, and then she... Which is basically like an alien hairball. Like, it... Yeah. I don't know, as a, a cat owner, I couldn't help but think of, like, oh, it, you know, it's coughing something up. Yeah, honestly, the CG of the alien coughing up the the, 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 the parasite ball was just mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, this is... 
all you're doing is making me think how bad this looks. This is just gratuitous yeah. for you know no reason. But it, I thought that in particular, I thought it looked um, pretty bad. I might be a bit more forgiving on the CGI than you. Like there are some parts where I, you know, like I, I wouldn't say that you know it's great overall, but then there are parts like I, I didn't like were bad here and there. But uh, this part in particular, I did think looked pretty bad. <laughs> So she puts the parasite in her mouth and she wakes up in her bed and it's a bright sunny morning. It's almost mm. dreamlike, right? And I think most mm. of the audience are going to get, oh, this is not real. This is just like what she's experiencing in her head while the parasite's taking control. And presumably, mm -hmm. this is what all the other people who have been taken over got. They're, it's kind of like Black Mercy mm. in Superman, right? Where he gets the <laughs> perfect right. life when he's got the parasite mm. connected to him. That's what she's got here. She's she's woke, woken up. It's a perfect day, and of course, the, the 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 real thing that makes it this perfect idol idol dream life for her is that her best friend's alive, right? And this is the one time in the movie where she says something. She says, "I'm so sorry, Maud," right? Mm -hmm. And then because she it's knows this, it's a whole this, movie worth it to finally hear her speak. <laughs> well, it's a don't, I, I I don't like this. I don't like this is where she speaks though because I I think. <laughs> If you're going to do the whole gimmick, because I knew it was going to happen. I knew she was going to say mm -hmm. a line of dialogue eventually. And I'm of like, course. okay, that can be a big moment. That can be a powerful moment where she finally tells this thing to F off, right? It could be an empowering mm -hmm. moment. It could be when she finally tells the parents of the other women to, to mm -hmm. get over or or to, to <laughs> apologize to them. Whatever it may be, there could be a powerful moment. But no, it's in her mm -hmm. own head. This, this is something in her dream. This is not something anyone else gets to hear. There's no audience for her saying yeah. this. It just it felt <laughs> kind of lackluster to me. But regardless, because she's aware this is fake, she's able to, like, she, again, this is really bad CG. She puts her fist into her mouth and it looks really <laughs> goofy. But then it, yeah. like, then it sort of, like, flickers to reality where she's literally pulling the parasite out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. And that kind of wraps up that. This is when the infected guy shows up, the postman, and drags her outside and it's like he's dragged her to a spot where the beam of light's going to hit but she dodges out of the way at the last second and pushes him into it so mm -hmm. he gets uh, half like beamed up instead and it's mm -hmm. clear that the aliens have realized halfway up that they've got the wrong person because they just turn it off oh, and it just it just drops to the ground it's like okay that was mildly <laughs> like, hey these beams aren't cheap you know that was mildly amusing i don't know if i wanted <laughs> to feel mildly amused watching this though i don't think that's what they were sure. going for so yeah. i don't know <laughs> Then the parasite goes into the beam of light, the one that came out of her mouth, mm -hmm. and it makes a doppelganger of her. And I'm like, oh, I guess we can... The aliens can do that now. Okay. Well, <sighs> if they can make doppelgangers, yeah. then why are they just... Why, why, why are they putting parasites in people and controlling them if they can just make doppelgangers? I... <laughs> Great point. It's almost like uh, the movie wasn't well thought out. <laughs> right? So we get this scene where the doppelganger comes up to her and she stares at her, and the doppelganger picks up a rock and, you know, <laughs> like, you know, uh, yeah, we've not found out exactly what's happened in the past yet, but uh, it's set up earlier on that, that Brim, the main character, had a box cutter on her, so she kills the doppelganger instead. She gets, she gets stabbed in the stomach a little bit with this other weapon, but she is able to kill the doppelganger. And there's this whole bit here where she's holding the doppelganger in her arms like it's a really sad thing. She's watching herself die. And... I kind of felt like in some ways, like, they've not explained the backstory yet, but I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I could see this just being the ending. Like, she's killed the part of herself <laughs> that was, sure. was was holding her back and keeping her trapped in the house and scared to go outside mm -hmm. with everyone else. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But whatever. We still have another 15, 20 minutes of movie to go, so we're going mm -hmm. to we're gonna do more of that. She sees a huge alien down the road. There's a, suddenly a kaiju-sized one for some mm -hmm. stupid reason. <laughs> And because of the spider legs, it looked even more generic. I, I felt like I was looking at the, the monster from Cloverfield or something like that, just with an alien head. <laughs> but, whatever. Yeah. I kind of like the spider leg legs a little bit, but... <laughs> ah, whatever. Teach their own. The, another beam of light comes down. She gets taken up, seemingly into the ship. And this was the part where I was thinking... You know, this was much better when it was fire in the sky and it was actually creepy. Instead, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, these shots of, like, tons of CG aliens and she's on, like, an operating table that's, like, a fancy high-tech looking thing. Mm -hmm. And they're basically exploring her mind and she's sort of living out her worst memory. And her mind, mm -hmm. which was the day that she accidentally killed her best friend because her best friend shoved her, so she picked up a rock and bashed her in the head with it <laughs> and then went, whoops-a-daisy. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. 
if you're mm-hmm. going to do this traumatic backstory where she accidentally killed someone, I can understand mm-hmm. wanting to do that. I absolutely can. But literally the only context we get for this mm-hmm. is that our friend shoved her. And by all accounts, <laughs> they were friends before this. At least I didn't get an indication that she's been she'd been bullied for a while or something like that. But all accounts right. pointed to they were friends and this was just a like a stupid moment, right, where a friend mm-hmm. shoved her. And she got so angry, she hit her in the head with a rock and it killed her. I can't help but feel that I don't find her that sympathetic based on what they've shown me here. Yeah. Uh, No, I very much agree. (laughs) Like, if she'd pushed her back and she happened to hit her head on something on the way down, that's, you know, that's more understandable. Yeah, Yeah. that's, that's like a genuine accident. But picking up a rock and smashing someone in the head with it Mm -hmm. is you know it's like oops i fired a gun oh they're dead oh, oh. yeah <laughs> whoops a daisy also like i don't know feels like <laughs> kind of a like I, again it's hard because you know i never really feel like i super got to know the character well because of uh you know not talking and or interacting with people and stuff but like th- it does kind of seem like something that's out of character for like you know this person who like we see that you know like practices like old timey dances and builds town models and you know like wears like old timey nightgowns <laughs> to bed like you know it, it doesn't really usually fit the mo of the kind of person that has like anger issues or would get angry enough to like bash their friend in with a rock like yeah it, it, i don't know it, it's just strange like you said like if you could make it much more of an accident um and then it you know then you would sympathize with with with, with her more or, uh, for like when or you know, characters are mean to her, you know. Yeah, or alternatively, yeah. Tim actually give us the sense that she has anger problems and that she's trying to keep them in check. Sure. Like, you know, all of these sure. things she's doing is her trying to keep them, you know, at bay. Mm-hmm. You know, give us moments where it seems like she's about to explode, but she kind of contains it or something to imply that there's a history of anger. But there's never there's nothing like that in the whole movie, unless you want yeah. to count her killing some of the aliens but she's literally fighting for her <laughs> life so none of that comes across as like her having you know i didn't get to any of those moments and think oh she's really good at killing people she must have killed someone <laughs> right yeah <laughs> like you know it never plays <laughs> like that so yeah th- th- this this backstory really fell flat for me it, it like mm-hmm. it, it it just made me think well this is a story because obviously the whole movie was about her getting over her trauma and her getting mm-hmm. over her um alienation right that's probably a good mm-hmm. word to use in this case because we're dealing with aliens right but the, the idea that she felt alienated from the world around her and that she had to forgive herself and the idea that you're building a story around someone having to forgive themselves even if the other people that felt the effects of what she did weren't ready to forgive her yet the idea that for herself she had to be able to move on there's actually a very powerful drama story in there to tell about someone the idea Absolutely, that yeah. if you've done something really bad, even if everyone else isn't ready to forgive you, enough time passes, you have to be able to move on with your life in some respect and sort of mm-hmm. move on from it. But when they eventually show you what she did, I can't help but go, eh, no, I don't really sympathize with you anymore because <laughs> you killed someone. And I yeah. know you were young, but still, it, it's just, I don't know. Def- like, obviously, yeah, young, but like... You know, it's not like she was like, you know, four or five and didn't know better. Like you were old enough where like you knew. Oh yeah, she was like a thirteen. Rock would cause damage. <laughs> yeah, she was like thirteen or something like that. Yeah, she yeah. was maybe twelve. So I don't know. Um, Which I mean, you know, still obviously like you let your emotions get the best of you. you. Might not think about consequences that much, but I mean, still, it's you also have to know that a rock is gonna hurt someone. Like, <laughs> so the aliens look at each other and basically decide something. So they look at each other like, "Oof, this girl has trauma." So they send her back down, and she's fine. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Oh, I guess I'm okay now." So she kind of rebuilds her house, right? She sets mm-hmm. everything up. She gets all nice, dressed up, and she goes out of town. And the end of the movie is that everyone in town is still infected by the aliens, but now they're nice to her. Mm-hmm. You, you see the thing <laughs> in their neck. You see that they're still getting mm-hmm. the parasite, but now they're the wave to her. Now they're nice to her. And then the final <laughs> scene of the movie. Is her dancing in the street at like a sort of, you know, like a... F- I, I mean, it's hard to tell. I kind of thought it might be like a wedding or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, it kind of looks like that. It's like one of those like outdoorsy weddings where some they've just set up like, yeah. sort of like 
area with some tables and they've got like a like a, a dancing area in the road but there's music mm-hmm. playing and there is it's a bunch of old people dancing and she's dancing with this guy and then a woman and she kind of, sort of swaps back and forth but the whole mm-hmm. thing has this weird like tone to it because it's got mm-hmm. this ultra almost dreamlike quality where she's just smelling the whole time the music mm-hmm. like you said earlier is like this old timey like music from the 30s or something like that mm-hmm. It felt like it was going for like a Bioshock kind of feeling or something, or that's a good way to or, describe it, or even a Fallout kind of thing. You know, some yeah. from, something from one of those video games. And then she sort of turns and looks at the camera, just happy, and then <laughs> stares at the camera for a few seconds. And then the camera looks up, and there's all the UFOs still on the sky. And I just, I hate it. <laughs> I hate <that. laughs> this last few minutes. Like everything about it, the vibe. The, the me- whatever message it was going for just wasn't clicking with me and, and if, I, if I sit and try and break it down I'm, I'm thinking about okay she, she like everyone else isn't over it so like but she is so they all have to be controlled um it, it just it, it it's so up its own ass with its <laughs> with its story about her, her trauma and I'm okay with that being there and I'm especially okay with that being subtext if not at least partially in the story but the problem is, is that it's so focused on by the end, with this mm-hmm. ending especially, that it overtakes any of the reality of what's actually happening to the point where I'm like, oh, of well, what are the aliens doing here then? Well, what, they've given well, her this paradise? I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, obviously, you know, it's good to have some mystery. Like, you don't need everything explained. Like, you know, I don't want the aliens to turn to the camera and be like, well, we decided to study you, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I have like no inkling of what their motivations are it's like okay are they trying to kill people are they trying to replace people are they using them as some type of source or research are they see see, (laughs) i would love a version of this movie where that exact moment happens on the ship where they're looking into her mind and then they look at Mm -hmm. each other and do some clicks as if they're talking to each other Mm -hmm. And then they make the choice to send her back down and spare her for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I I would love a version of this movie where that moment happens and there's a good idea of like, not exactly why they've made that choice, but there's a good one or two options that the audience can can maybe go, oh, I think they're sparing her because they've set up that these aliens feel sympathy for certain types of people or because they recognize that she's like them or something like anything that would have made me feel like I kind of in some way maybe get why they've given her this life that they've left her with. But I got nothing from this. I felt nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I agree. It, it just, it left me on such a, a sour note. And then it's, again, it just feels so, I hate to use this again, but just, it just feels so cloyingly precious. Like, it, it just feels like it's so happy <laughs> with what it's doing and it, uh, it just uh, it just left a really bad <laughs> taste actually, in my mouth <laughs> it's funny i compared it to an old episode of twilight zone because mm-hmm. what this actually reminds me more of and how its quality is is the modern twilight zone the the twilight zone that, <laughs> that was there for two seasons on mm-hmm. it was cbs all access at the time now paramount plus um the one presented by jordan peele there was like one good episode in two seasons of that show most of it was absolute trash and it mm-hmm. kind of had the problem this has, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, where it felt the need to kind of keep going further with twists, right? They'd have an mm-hmm. interesting, maybe enough premise early on, but then it would just rush through the idea and then keep adding on more swerves and more mm-hmm. twists. And it felt so convoluted by the end that you weren't really sure what the point of the episode was compared to like a lot of classic Twilight and episodes that would have a simple <sighs> idea. There'd be a yeah. good twist that made sense. You'd understand what it was saying with the twist and why the twists mm-hmm. affected things. This movie feels all of that modern Twilight Zone where it just kept adding more elements into it and mm-hmm. the more it added, the less I cared, the less I was interested and the less it felt like it all fit together. Um, I... You know, what a wasted opportunity that show was. I um, I, th- I think I only saw one or two episodes of it, but it, it I heard nothing <laughs> good at all about it. No, nah, there's like... The second last episode, I think it was, of season two is the only episode I liked in the whole show. And it actually happened to be really good. But, Mm -hmm. you know, that is like one out of 20 is not... (laughs) (sighs) It's pretty bad. It's it's not great. But, Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah. Yeah. I kind of hate this, Tim. 
<laughs> I, I kind of hated it. I, I, I think it took a fine premise and mm. it, it it felt like some film student got right out of film school and is like, mm. I'm so smart. I'm going to do all these really <laughs> meaningful things in my movie. Yeah. But it just all feels kind of shallow the way it's done. You know, it's I, a good way to put it. Yeah, it 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 definitely it, it's not really doing anything that's like special or unique, and it does like obviously you know, uh, you know there, there's no way to know like the you know the thoughts or motivations of of the director or anything, but it's like you said, it like it feels like you know he thinks he he's being so clever or smart with what it's doing, and it ends up just being something that's really like yeah Aww. like I said just very shallow <laughs> Joe's so, Joe's sad time I checked to see What's if that? he has any other directing credits and he has something one something coming up <laughs> he has one other directing credit and it's a movie we liked oh interesting okay he directed Spontaneous oh really oh that's a shame <laughs> yeah, yeah that, we, that, that was a much better movie yeah we liked that movie quite a bit <laughs> that that was such a pleasant surprise that movie yeah. I mean, that's kind of wild that this uh is the same dude because, huh. and, and admittedly, yeah, I can I can sort of track it in the sense that that movie was definitely more about its uh like, you know, it, it was less a movie about the literal plot and more about what the entire thing meant and what it represented right. and what it was saying about people and politics and all that stuff, um, For sure. right? It absolutely was a movie like that, but it kind of fit into the tone of that movie because it had this kind of quirky comedy, like vibe to it on top of the. The funny yeah. blood explosions that were happening. <laughs> this feels like it doesn't succeed at the surface level movie. It should be about someone being tormented by an alien. I think the fact that she goes through like five aliens just completely makes it dull to mm-hmm. me. And like, no, oh, you, you, like, you, like maybe maybe like there's an alien hunting her, and eventually it calls mm-hmm. them back up, so it becomes aliens by the end, where there's multiple sure. aliens. But this idea that she's just killing them one by one <laughs> just made it feel like, uh, well, there's no threat here. She's got plot armor. <clears throat> For sure. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen, like, a, um, you know, seemingly exciting or promising uh, director with, like, you know, a really good indie debut that kind of goes on to make something of a bigger budget, a little bit more mainstream that's just not as satisfying. Uh so maybe it's something that just kind of got away from him or, or something. I don't know. But yeah, his writing so. credits are very uh, 50 50. Because, on the one hand, he wrote Underwater, which. Okay. I, I like that one a little bit more than you. Yeah. Uh, but... But, but on the other hand, he wrote The Babysitter, which I actually quite like. Okay. So yeah, that was a very, good one. very hit and miss here with uh, <laughs> this guy and his previous credits. So. Uh, I guess that means that the next time he's got a movie, his, his next film apparently is called Vivian Hasn't Been Herself Lately. Uh, okay. I, I would say 50-50 if it ends up being good or not. Uh, I, the, I'm going to go on a very quick little rant here. but Oh, God, what? No, we just... Uh, I, I just feel like movie titles are trying to get too cute nowadays. Like, uh, how they're all becoming these long, like, sentences and, and stuff like it's just like let's just get back to like cooler straight to the point simpler titles uh, uh tim i completely disagree with this mm-hmm. movie titles used to be interesting and recently mm-hmm. they're more dull often than not and i either they're dull because they're just called mm-hmm. plain or <laughs> they're got a colon when they shouldn't have a colon mm-hmm. and we get these big stupid double barreled titles that are just clunky and awkward Vivian well, hasn't I agree. Been her... Those we don't need. Yeah, <laughs> Vivian hasn't been herself lately. I think it's a fine title. I, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Do you have a problem with the name "An Nightmare on Elm Street"? Because it's about the same length, <laughs> and that's a good title. You you know for for full well if that movie was made today mm-hmm. originally, you know, if it wasn't a remake of of a previous thing, you know it'd just be called uh, "Nightmare Killer" <laughs> or something <laughs> shit like that. I mean, that's not actually that bad to be honest. But you know what I mean, Mister Finger Gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Knife knife fingers. (laughs) Sharp glove man. (laughs) I don't know. I I think on average... I think maybe... I I think movie titles Mm -hmm. on average are actually too simple and generic now versus what they used to be. Like, Mm -hmm. I I love Jordan Peele as much as the next person, but I really think his titles are annoying because they're hard to search (laughs) because they're just so small and 
like too generic That's sounding. A point. <laughs> I guess it's the kind of thing where maybe it wouldn't bother me when the movies are good, but like this movie, it kind of feels like it wastes a title because it's a good title, but then the movie sucks. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, I know, but you, what are you going to say? Oh, well, your movie sucks, so you should pick a shitty title so it matches. Like, <laughs> yes, I, I think that's what you should do. But they don't think let, their movie let a sucks. Better though. movie have this title. They, they don't think their movie sucks, though, Tim. That's the point. They, they think it's mm. good, so they're going to put a good title on it if they if they can think of one. Oh, they'll change their mind when they listen to this review. <laughs> Damn, I actually, yeah, I genuinely didn't know until I checked there mm. that he did Spontaneous. That's really surprising to me, because that movie was mm. surprisingly good. So, yeah, uh, that is a shame. <sighs> that is a shame. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I, are we done? I, I don't know if I have much left to add. I, yeah, I got nothing else. I didn't like it. I really didn't like it, Tim. <laughs> It's a shame, though, because I, I think if you just told me the premise, oh, it's a movie with no dialogue where one woman has to survive against an alien that keeps invading her house, I'd be like, oh, that sounds great. Sign me up. And if you give sure, that yeah. to, I don't know, uh, pick a... Freddy Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> it's Freddy Alvarez, not Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> Sorry, I had Nightmare on the I'm sorry, on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, a slight mispronunciation is one thing, but you just flat out said a wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> it was a slight mispronunciation. I just added one letter. Yeah, but Freddy's like an actual name, though. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. I still uh, say he'd be a good choice, though, for this premise. Sure, yeah, I could I could see it. I, I mean, arguably the last 20 minutes of uh, Evil Dead 2013 is just one woman... With no dialogue, try to survive against shit. So, so yeah. I, I was coming in more at the um, uh, uh, don't breathe angle of like having to sneak around. Okay, yeah. I could, yeah, okay, I can see that. He's busy with alien though, Tim. Right? He's got he's got bigger That's fish true, to yeah, fry. This he, guy's doing his own uh, alien movie. <laughs> bigger fish to fry. All right, mm -hmm. Tim, what are you rating? No one will save you. And then, speaking of aliens, it's just funny because the tagline for that movie is in space, no one can hear you scream, but uh, this was on Earth and we still couldn't hear her scream. I mean, technically you kind of do, but couldn't hear her most of the time. <laughs> so funny, Tim. What's your in? <laughs> um, I don't know. 3.5, I guess. <laughs> it's... Um, I think I, I was thinking more of a, a 4, but then again, as we're talking about just <laughs> Kind of made me a, a little bit more mad than I was, and I was already kind of mad <laughs> coming in. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of squandering a lot of potentially good stuff. Uh, there's some sequences that aren't bad, and some, and again, just kind of the general idea of yeah, this like you know, alien monster survival kind of movie is really good, but it's just so brought down with the you know, all the grief, trauma, insert stuff, and it, it feels so enamored with uh the gimmick that it's doing which is just falls so flat for me it, it just really like brings the movie down several notches because it's just so it's it's hard to like ever get fully um you know like just uh enveloped into the movie because that's it, you're just i don't know i, I just feel i'm always being reminded of like yeah, it's weird that they have this gimmick that's just not like working for this type of movie, and it's strange that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, so much of the last half hour is spent in her head in a dream, or what? Well, either when the parasites in her mouth, or when she's up in the spaceship, when we get these sequences where it's all like not real, and that's just mm -hmm. not what I wanted from this movie. But honestly, the biggest problem I would say is that I just don't think the actual suspense scenes of the alien chasing her are, are mm -hmm. that good for the most part. There's a couple of good moments individually but the aliens are cg they feel neutered because they keep getting killed by her so they don't even feel like they're that <laughs> impressive or strong or scary yeah. uh and i just don't think the direction makes it work in a way that i would i would enjoy those sequences mm -hmm. and given that that's the entire selling point of the movie that's a pretty big problem three out of ten for me <laughs> uh, well 
I guess we'll put this on the pile for <laughs> potential best of 2023 candidates. <laughs> Worst of twenty twenty three, maybe uh, <laughs> best. Uh, but there you go. That is uh, our thoughts on "We Will Save You." I was not expecting this to be such a a negative. Do you say "We Will Save You"? I don't think so, but I'm not that okay. sure. <laughs> I might have misspoke. I don't know. <laughs> I only bring it up because you feel the need to constantly hammer me anytime I <laughs> misspeak. So uh, I did it twice this episode. You're right, but <laughs> to be fair, they were both really silly mistakes. One was he implied that the main character had telekinesis, which was very incorrect. <laughs> very different movie. <laughs> and then, secondly, Freddy Alvarez was just too funny to not. Mm. give you shit for <laughs> okay well getting the the movie title wrong is, i guess isn't as big a deal <laughs> i'm not convinced i said it but i mean you know what it's fine it's fine you can we'll have rewind it. the tape you can have it maybe i said it wrong uh i'm just trying to wrap up the show okay i'm just trying to get us out of here this has been screams after midnight we've just been talking about no one will mm. save you Give us money. <laughs> yes, go to patreon.com slash TV. <laughs> Once a month, we do a bonus episode. In fact, last week, mm-hmm. the bonus episode was a Patreon and YouTube member only. And, uh, it was a good one. Yeah, what did we do last week? I forget. Deadly Friend. That's right, Deadly Friend. We did Deadly Friend, mm-hmm. which is a Wes Craven movie who, funnily enough, directed the Freddy Krueger movies, which were brought up <laughs> at, at various that, that's points. That's a much better um, sci-fi movie than this there was a robot in it so technically there was some sci-fi yes i can't argue there was some sci-fi elements what's all that sci-fi i thought you didn't like sci-fi tim but there been a lot of sort of borderline sci-fi movies recently i i i got the bug maybe uh maybe i've just listened to too many episodes of ace i'm starting to to see the value of uh uh what we know as science fiction yeah so you get bonus episodes of screams after midnight uh, there's bonus shows that I do with David uh, on Patreon. There's a Criterion mm-hmm. podcast that we do monthly. And also Extra Reels, which we do monthly, which is the worst movies of all time. That's your Neil Breens and stuff like that. So <laughs> uh, if that sounds like fun, you can go check out all that stuff over at Patreon. Uh, plus, we do uh, even more streams, which used to be a different format, but now it's kind of a series of mm-hmm. shorter topic videos. We'll do two or three a month uh, of us just talking about. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there'll be news stories, which is what the last couple have been. Uh, but we've got a couple mm-hmm. of other things planned uh, in the coming weeks, so look forward to that. But uh, that is the show. Thank you very much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, and we will see you next time.